Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters, Great Masters, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Baba Ji Krishna, Baba Ji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints and Sages of all religion. Saints and sages of all religions. Humbly and joyfully we bow at thy feet. Humbly and joyfully we bow at thy feet. O oh, Divine Mother. O oh, Divine Mother. Guide our lives. Guide our lives. Awaken us. Awaken us. Into thy light. Into thy light. Give us the understanding. Give us the understanding. To know our highest duty. To know our highest duty. That leads us to thee. That leads us to thee. We are your children, Mother. We are your children, Mother. Bring us home. Bring us home. Receive us. Receive us. In this lifetime. In this lifetime. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Please repeat after me. I live in the assurance of God's truth within. I live with the assurance of God's truth within. In my inner self. In my inner self. And not in the opinions of others. And not in the opinions of others. Lies true victory. Lies true victory. I'll read from Rays of the One Light. Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. Today's topic, many are the pathways to truth. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramhansa Yogananda. On the dedication page of Swami Sriyananda's book, The Path, appears the following account. A group of Paramhansa Yogananda's disciples had gone with him to see a movie about the life of Gyandev, a great saint of medieval India. Afterwards, they gathered and listened to the master explain certain subtler aspects of that inspiring story. A young man in the group mentioned another film he had seen years earlier in India 
about the life of Mirabai, a famous woman saint. If you'd seen that movie, he exclaimed, you wouldn't even have liked this one. The guru rebuked him. Why make such comparisons? The lives of great saints manifest in various ways the same one God. The Bible contains a similar account in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9. And John said, Master, we saw one casting out evil devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. The more central a truth, the greater the number of contexts in which it can be applied. Truth is like a pure white light, containing within itself the full spectrum of the rainbow. Let no one tell you what your path to God ought to be. Many are the paths. Select your own according to the dictates of your own nature no matter how out of step that puts you with other people. Sri Krishna, in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita states, trying even unsuccessfully to fulfill one's own spiritual duty, dharma, is better than pursuing successfully the duties of others. Better death itself in the pursuance of one's own duties. The pursuance of another's duties is fraught with spiritual danger. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh, oh, oh. to our Sunday service. Um, thank you to these beautiful souls, Aaron, Cora, Anoop, uh, and this very beautiful but empty for now uh, East LA Center. Cannot wait for the day when we will gather together in person. Teach me to find happiness in the joy of others. O Divine Mother, O Mother Divine, teach me to love others and to serve them in thy name. Teach me to be true to my word, even as I want others to be true to theirs. Teach me to love others, even as I want them to love me. Teach me, O oh dearest Heavenly Mother, to make others happy and to make them smile. Teach me to find my happiness in the happiness of all. And that was a prayer for children, which I found very endearing. And now this is another prayer. I think particularly pertinent in our given climate, in the temple of united hearts. It befits not thy lily tender feet to dance on the stony soil of hard hearts, on the petals of my sympathy for others. May thy tenderness dance forever. Divine Mother, may I feel thy heart throbs in my own heart, thy joy in my happiness thy wise direction in all my activity, thy spirit in my soul. Divine Mother, I lay all the flowers of my love at thy feet of eternity. O oh, open wide the flowers of my budding devotion and release thy fragrance that it may spread from my soul to the souls of others, ever whispering of thee. I pray to behold my love reflected in others. In the light of that greater love, may I behold thine unveiled face of perfect compassion. May I behold my true self in others, that I perceive thee ever enthroned in our united hearts. At the heart of my whispered prayers, I feel stirring thy silent whispers. In the light of my burning candle of devotion, I behold at last 
thy sacred blaze of perfect love. O Divine Mother, unite our hearts as one heart, so that on the sacred altar of united hearts we may find thine omnipresence enthroned forever. What a beautiful prayer, like I said, especially given the disharmony that we are all experiencing in the current climate. <coughs> Our topic, many other pathways to truth. Um, Ramakrishna, a saint from uh, Bengal in India, he used to say, Jatumat Tatupat, when we translate that into Bengali, it's difficult to translate. So uh, the best I could translate was, as many um, conscious beings, so many paths to the truth. As many conscious beings, so many paths to the truth. So that implies that each one of us is going to have our own path to God. And that's exactly what Master had said also. We have to individually make love to God. And so, you know, you could be part of an organization. We could all have the same guru. We could all be following his teachings. But if you really look deep into each one of our lives, um, you'll notice they're all very different, right? As many pathways, as many conscious beings. And why is that? Let's think about that for a minute. Why does it have to be so individual? Because we as individual beings, we need different lessons. We have done different things. We have different karma. And based on that, our vrittis, our tendencies, are different. We react differently to different things. We likes, our likes and dislikes are different. So on our path to the truth, which is basically perfecting our own selves and finding that we are as much as part of that truth as we were always. Um, in that process, in that process of for perfecting ourselves, we have to do different things. We have to learn different lessons. So the example that comes to my mind is, you know, um, I'm great in algebra, right? So what's the point in me taking algebra and getting full score every time, year after year? I'm not progressing. I need, I need to learn geometry. And yes, I will fail in geometry, especially in the beginning. But therein lies my process of progress, my pathway to the truth. And hence, that's what Krishna is saying to Arjuna. Oh, Arjuna... It is okay to fail in your, when you are trying to adhere to your spiritual duty, your dharma. And if you fail in that, that is far, far greater than trying to work out someone else's karma. So that's what this actually means. Um, so somebody, imagine, uh, has been a doctor in maybe many, many lifetimes. So they do it very well. They're really fine doctors but they need an, another lesson to learn. And then the soul knows that. And so they might find themselves in, in, in another lifetime. Maybe they're working as a mother because they need to learn the power of service, putting others in front of um, themselves or, you know, so many roles that we find ourselves in. So, so that is dharma. That is the... That is the individuality of our spiritual path and that is the importance of following one's own dharma because otherwise we're wasting our time. The, the greatest goal, the greatest duty is to find God. In this body of our human being, in this life of a human being, our greatest duty is to find that truth. Because only as a human being, we will find it. Such is the creation of God. And, and it, we know this, that it takes about the same time for us to evolve, because that's a natural process as we evolve from very, there's a very little consciousness in the rocks, and then we evolve gradually into higher and higher beings of greater and greater consciousness till we become the human being. And you would think it should be fast from then onwards, since that's that last step. Guess what? It takes equal and exact, almost the same amount of time as it took for the evolution to become a human, to go from there to perfecting ourselves in God. Um, and that's because 
we have our own free will. And the free will is can be like a, a, a like a wild card. We can just take it anywhere we want. And we roam in the wilderness and when we spend a lot of time and do so many things except finding God. But when that hunger for God develops gradually, surely, just as the fruit ripes, similarly the soul develops the hunger for God. It is the part of evolution. And then we find ourselves in a lifetime perhaps where we have a guru such as master and um, and our job is to just follow his teachings and perfect ourselves. But the question arises, so we understand that we have to perform our spiritual duty. How do I know what is my spiritual duty? Isn't that a very difficult question? Uh, do I know whatever I'm doing that is my spiritual duty? And when I thought about it, it came to me that it is not rocket science at all. Um, Divine Mother has made it really easy for us. What is our spiritual duty? Whatever we come across in our lives, the, lives, the life situation that I find myself in right at this moment, to do it the best I can, is my spiritual duty. So it doesn't matter what we are doing, whether we are leading an organization uh, of your guru, helping to spread his work, or maybe you are just collecting the, um, the firewood. It doesn't matter. You do whatever Divine Mother has asked you to do. But what's important, you do it with him, in attunement to that guru. You do it with being we do it together with Divine Mother. That's what's important. And, and so it doesn't really matter what we are doing outwardly if we are doing it right inwardly. It is, surely, it is surely teaching us the lessons we need to learn. And we know, we all know that. Because it's not pleasing. It is not um, difficult. It's not easy at all. Um, I, I'll share, uh, Arnab says this all the time, practicing the inconvenience. And I'll say it with a pinch of salt because it doesn't... So when we practice inconvenience, we are not necessarily doing our spiritual duty. But when we are doing our spiritual duty, you can rest assured you are practicing inconvenience. Think about that. It has to be. Because these are the rough edges that we are smoothing. And no smoothing of rough edge, rough, a rough edge can be very convenient. In fact, the soul, the ego, wants to stay in the convenience. It wants to stay in the, um, the known. I don't want to go out and try something different. I don't want to make my life inconvenient. But guess what? If that is your dharma, then it, it will be it will be inconvenient. So practicing inconvenience, like I said, do it with a pinch of salt. Just check to see if that is your spiritual dharma, what is whatever is happening. But you can be sure practicing inconvenience has its great rewards because it's always moving us towards the right direction if, if done correctly. So I also wanted to talk about a little bit about... Um, you know, our natural state, because I feel, uh, including myself, we overcomplicate our lives. God is simple, and humans, we humans have made it so complex. Um, I was reading in the restroom uh, in the beautiful East LA here, where it talks about, many of you have probably been here and seen it, it talks about how it's a natural state of the soul to be, to be calm. And to, to meditation is very natural to the soul. And I'll add to that, it is natural for us. The natural state for us is being happy, just like the children are. They're naturally happy. They don't need anything. Um, just like the animal kingdom all around us is naturally happy. That is our true state. That is our eternal state. So then why are we so unhappy? Because we have made it so. We have made it overly complicated. And, and, and Krishna is kind of 
breaking it down for us as he's telling, explaining. Arjuna asked the same question. Oh, Krishna, why do we always, you know, mess things up? Obviously, I'm paraphrasing him. Why do we always manage to mess things up? We know this is the right thing for us to do. We know this is our spiritual duty, but why don't we do it? It's as if something, some force is um, pushing us in the opposite direction. And Krishna says, Arjuna, that's because we have desires. The delusion, the maya around us, which is basically what are desires. Desires is the ego's way of saying, of not accepting the reality. Isn't it? It is what it is, whatever it is. But the ego says, no, I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be in this way. That's desire. And we can clearly see how that quickly leads us to the path of unhappiness. Desire and anger. That's what Krishna says. Desire and anger. These are the two enemies of humans. Because anger is closely related to desire. Um, when we don't fulfill our desire, the inevitable result is anger. So if we can consciously stay in that, you know, in that attitude of understanding, neti, neti, so now we have to apply um, the sword of um, understanding, of, of wisdom, of gyan. Um, this, this is not real. What I am thinking is not real. Let's for a moment take a step back. This is my ego clustering it all up. Let's take a step back. What is it really without my color of desire on it? What is the reality that Divine Mother has given me? Can I accept that without my desires? without my likes and dislikes? Can I accept it calmly? And, and the tools that we have, that is the tool of meditation, actually helps us out a lot, as we all know. When we experience even a little bit of that calmness, of that clarity, um, that state of not having likes and dislikes, um, and that touch of Divine Mother's love in our heart, it becomes a lot easier um, because it is, it is definitely not easy. And so that is how we can live our lives, our very individual lives, because the, the central goal for all lives is to find the truth, is to understand who we truly are and find that eternal home in God. And then the other thing I wanted to add to that is many other pathways to truth applies to others as well where we stand, as we see others. So it becomes very clear that it's pointless to expect everyone to be doing the same thing as we are doing, and that applies sometimes to our, um, to our partners. And you'll see couples living their lives. I've seen many couples, two very true souls, doing their highest duty, and apparently, outwardly, it may seem they're doing such two different things. How can they even live their lives together? Because they are sincerely practicing their dharma. And, and that, is that, that is that lesson. It is not easy. And that is that lesson that, that those souls need to learn. So, and then that applies to you know, people around us, our friends, our relatives, our, our extended families, um, everyone in this world, even strangers. There's no room for judgment. Everyone is trying their best. I love this story that Devi shared with us, I think recently. Uh, I've, I've heard it from her before. It never fails to. Uh, I, I, I love this story. So it goes as, um, I think, J the Jyotish and Devi, if you don't know who they are, they are the spiritual directors of Ananda Worldwide. And um, with this great work to lead, um, you know, it comes with its, with its own uh, sometimes not so easy uh, feedback. So they got such a feedback in, in, in way of a letter. Somebody wrote a very harsh letter to them, um, listing out point by point how exactly what they're doing is not the right thing for them to do. It was difficult for them, and they had just received the letter right before they were um, supposed to attend a satsang with Swamiji. And they didn't want to bring this up. They were sad, but they wanted to kind of, you know, push it aside. They'll talk, talk, talk about it later. But let's go attend Swamiji's satsang now. 
And as soon as they walked in, Swamiji saw their faces and knew instantly that something was wrong. And he said, what's wrong? And they said, no, nothing is wrong. And he said, let's step into the next room. And so they went aside and so they told him, this is what has happened. And Swami listened very calmly. And he said, okay, I, I understand. Um, you know, so Swami, what do you think? Are we doing everything wrong, really? And he said, no. You're doing your best. You're doing your best to, for who you are. But they were not satisfied. They were saying, you know, you still want that, you know, especially from your teacher, that you're doing right and they are wrong. And so they, you know, they're wanting more. But what do you think about him? And Swami calmly said, he's doing the best he can for who he is. And then he paused and added, I am doing the best that I am for who I am. Such a, such a marvelous advice, such marvelous wisdom. We are all doing the best we can for who we are. That takes all conflicts away, doesn't it, from this world? We are all trying our very best. And if we can see everything with that light, and that does not dilute for a moment our focus on our dharma, by the way, um, we have no room to say, yes, I am doing my best, but can I do better? That, that is where we come when it comes to our dharma. But when it comes to others, there is nothing but compassion because we know, because we know how difficult it is and they are doing their very best. And so, hopefully in this way, all of us together, we find our own dharma and adhere to it with all the power we have by the grace of our Guru, for, for He is always there. And Divine Mother's love is always surrounding us. We can feel, I like to feel Master's hand on my head that gives me a lot of power. So I'll share that with you. So with His hand on our heads, we move along this path to the truth and we see everyone else doing the same. God bless you.